Good day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech, and I am back with some more Tinkercad fun. So let's get cracking. Friends, a user asked for a wing nut in Tinkercad. I've got a strategy. We'll start by hitting Create New 3D Design. Of course, we'll start by naming it Wing Nut, and then I'm going to put a V2. Friends, we are using a technique that was shared with me by ZDP. We're going to start by finding the awesome screw thread. If you type screw, it is right here. I made it a favorite so it's easier to find from now on. And we want to bring this shape out. And then the first thing I want you to do is switch it to clockwise. This project does not work if you don't do that. So I want to make sure that is the first thing we adjust. Now we can return to our basic shapes. And I want you to bring out what we're going to use for the bolt head. It is the polygon. We're going to keep the sides at 6. And then I want you to change the height to 6 as well. This gives us a decent size to hold on to. I do want you to click 2 on the bevel. And I want you to click 5 or 10 for the number of segments. We can cruise a cylinder on top of that. This will be the bolt. Of course, we want to make the side 64. And then we are going to shift shrink it. And the number we want to type is 6. And then we want to make the height 12. Really quickly, I'm going to grab those two shapes, do L for a line, make the blue on the boss, and choose center and center. Real quickly, our diameter is 6, so let me show you how we make this thread so it fits and is easier to 3D print. To get a diameter of 6, we're going to use a radius of 3 and press enter. We're going to use an outer radius of 4.6 and press enter. The inner thread height is 2.4 and press enter. The outer thread height is 0 0.8 and press enter. We're going to have a single turn, one and press enter. We're going to keep 64 sides per turn. And the total height is going to be 12.4 and press enter. We're going to reuse a similar one of these in a few minutes. So we're going to do control D. And now we can do C to cruise and put this up on top of the blue shape. Now we can select all three. Do L for a line, and of course, choose middle and choose middle. I often like to look at that from a corner so you can see that middle dot a little bit easier. Right now, we're going to sync this in so the thread has a cleaner starting point. We're going to quickly set our nudge to 0.1 millimeters, and we're going to do control down as it sinks into the blue shape. I'm going to zoom in. Let's hit F for fit view, and what we're doing is looking for this corner to actually connect with the blue just like that. This is going to be one of our threads. We are going to add two more. We're going to do control D. We're going to rotate a little bit and then click the box and type 120 degrees. And now we can simply hit control D and we have got all three of our threads moving up our bolt. It's that easy. Now we want to make this nice and clean so it's easy to put into our wing nut. We're going to do that with the cone. So simply bring one of those out and we're going to create what's called an inverse hole. So bring out a solid, we'll leave that one alone. We're going to go over here to our cone, and I want you to change it to these numbers, 2.8, and press enter. And I want you to use 4.7 and press enter. Of course, the height needs to be less. We're going to put the number 3, and we want to bump the sides up to 64. This shape right here is going to trim this when we make what's called an inverse hole. So right now I made it a hole. We're going to select the cube, do L for a line. We can click the cube and choose the middle and the middle so that it is aligned. And then we're going to simply hit group, which is control G. If we hit T for transparent, you can see that shape in there. But now we're going to switch it to a hole. And then we're just going to align this. Once again, L for a line. Let the blue one be the boss. Choose middle. I always like to look at this one from this corner so we can see it a little better. And now we need to raise this up so that it's ready to cut. We can just raise this up to where it's actually going to trim that just a little bit. Now if we select everything and do control G, we have got a wicked cool bolt with a sweet 3D printable thread. Friends, these are the steps for making the awesome hole that is going to work for our wing nut. Of course, first, make it a hole. Change that inner radius to 3.1. We 
which should work for most printers. You could go 3.2 if you thought your printer needed that. We're going to change this gap right here to 5. We're going to make the inner thread 2.8 and press enter. We're going to make the outer thread height 0 0.9 and press enter. And we're going to keep these numbers one turn, sides of 64, total height, and of course it has to be clockwise. Once again, we need three of these, so we're going to do Control D. We're going to rotate it. Remember, we type 120 degrees, press Enter, and do Control D to get our third one. Select all of those and do Control G to group them. And we're going to cruise them with the letter C up on top of the other bolt. We can now move this into place by first selecting them all, doing L for a line, and choosing middle. And don't forget this is easier to spot from this corner of the cube and middle. And now we're going to use our 0.1 nudge to get these to the same height. So I'm clicking on just the whole 0.1 nudge and I'm going to do control down until that lines up and we can double check the air gap. If you zoom in, you can see how that completely surrounds. There's going to be a cut above and a cut below our shape when it's done. This is what makes this work, and because this climbs steeply, it works well for most printers. We're going to leave our bolt right in place, but we're going to lock it so that it cannot group with our other parts. And now we're going to grab the parts we use for the wing nut. I'm going to build my wing nut with the half sphere. We can cruise it right on top of that shape. Once again, we can select them all, do L for a line, and we want to click that bolt and choose center and center. And then the wing nuts are going to be created with a real cool part called a circular trapezoid. Type circ, C-I-R-C, and there it is. You can make it a favorite. I'm going to bring it out, set it down. As you can see, it's huge. We're going to adjust its measurements with a shift shrink. The number I'm going to tell you to type is 13 and press enter. Then we can change the thickness to 2 and press enter. We do need to rotate this. For attaching it, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees this way, so I'm going to hold down shift and rotate. That means it's only two clicks. If I look at it from a corner, I'm going to also do shift rotate in this direction. So now you'll see it attaches right there for the wing nut. And finally, I'll do D to drop just so it's above zero. I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees this way too. So once again, shift rotate and bingo, there is our wing nut lift this up you can see that's a decent place to put it and this angle is going to make it so it can print without supports i want my wing nut to be just a tiny bit smaller so it fits on the bolt so we're going to do alt shift until we're happy i think that is going to be just what i want now i can nudge this in when i'm happy i'm going to do Control d shift nudge to the other side and use the sweet mirror tool few more clicks to get it to what I think looks pretty decent. And then I can shift select the two of them. I'm going to group them with control G and then one final selection L for a line. And once again, make sure everything is in the middle and in the middle. All right, everybody, it is time to cut out the center post to make this a little easier. We're going to get rid of the half sphere. Let's also double check to make sure that we are lined up. You can see here, I'm going to do 0.1 nudge and make sure that air gap is on both sides you just never know how things could have got moved while we we're building lots of adjusting here i think that's going to be absolutely awesome and now let's cruise a cylinder out onto this project we want to set it right on the purple i'm going to zoom back a little bit and then we're going to shift nudge it and type 6.3 in the box now notice that hit it behind the shape we stretch it up, I want it to be about 13, so I'm going to type 13 in the box. And now we can select everything we've built, do L for a line, and make sure it is set to the center and center of the purple bolt. If we hit show all, we can bring back the half sphere, and at this point, if we select everything, making sure the purple one is locked, when we do control G, it groups, and our project is in place and you can see the gaps around it. If we hit T for transparent, you can see through as well, just double checking. 
I'm going to quickly click on this one and hide it. Note the pattern on the inside threads. That's pretty interesting. I'm going to do show all to bring everything back. And our final step is to use a cone to trim the inside. The same way as we did here, we could trim the top as well. But if I make these back to solid by doing T again, I think I like that. I think it's going to be a clean print when we're done. So let's hide this for a moment, bring out our cone, cruise it on top, make it a hole. The top radius is going to be three. The bottom radius is going to be six. The height is going to be two. And the sides need to be 64 and press enter. Let's quickly do show all, select everything, L for a line, purple one's the boss, center and center. And now when we group, note this one's got the purple edge because it's locked. If we click on the purple one and hit hide, we can get a cool glimpse of how that turned out. I'm going to do show all to bring it back. If you want to double check one more time, T for transparent, you can see those air gaps. That is perfect, so I'm just going to move it out and hit D to drop. And we are ready for 3D printing. Friends, to send it to the printer, you could send them separately. I'm going to send them together. We're going to choose export and STL. I'm going to change my name of this to Wingnut version 2A just because I've made so many of them while I was mastering the process. Once again, I want to send a huge shout out to ZDP189 for sharing all the skills used to make these awesome threads. Of course, there will be a link in the properties to his profile so you can see the other amazing projects he has shared with the world. Friends, as I wrap up, let's check out my website one more time. Of course, I've got the page dedicated to Tinkercad. Tons of amazing categories. Below that, you'll find the day one favorites, the useful starters, and the Tinkercad essentials. Friends, you'll also find the sweet built-in messaging tool. You can click that button, add your question, comment, or suggestion, and reach me almost instantly. I do also want to highlight the course Tinkercad in 20 Days that you can find on cadclass.org. All the information you need is in that video. Also, don't forget the link to the Tinkercad Community Discord. As you can see, there are a boatload of members, and it's a fantastic place to talk everything Tinkercad. Finally, friends, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech. Don't forget you absolutely make my day if you take time to leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.